Canada's population has soared by more than 1.2 million people over the past 12 months. Our guest says the pop in population could worsen the housing shortfall by more than half a million units in just two years. We're joined by James Orlando, Director and Senior Economist at TD Economics. So I, you do hear the federal government criticised for bringing in all these, these immigrants, um, but there isn't housing for them. Yeah, that's a, it's really the problem that we're facing right now is that we know that Canada has been in need and we're a country that's been built uh, rightly so on immigration for so long. Uh, the issue is, is that when you bring people in, people come to Canada for a reason. They come to Canada for a quality of life that they, they want, that they're striving for. But if we don't build the necessary fundamentals around the people that come in, you have this um, imbalance within the country and we highlight many areas but housing is definitely one of them i think housing has been really one of the generational problems that we've had in canada where we've underbuilt for years and based on our population projections it looks like we're going to continue having an undersupply of housing which propagates more of the issues we have in canada right now with affordability concerns. Yeah, I seem to remember um, that's been a problem often in Canadian history, hasn't it, for more than a century, a lack of housing in this country? It has. has. Um, Canada's known uh, globally as being uh, fairly undersupplied when it comes to housing. Uh, part of it is due to the fact that we have been a, a beacon for people around the world, for people to want to move to Canada. And it's a great thing. We, we provide a country that it is a fantastic place for people to live. Um, but the problem is, is that when you plan around uh, certain population growth, you even think about how a city plans for itself. Um, if you know, and, and government knows how many people they're letting into a country, they need to think about other things. They need to think about how many houses, they need to think about uh, how many hospitals, how many doctors, how many, uh, the roads that they have, the sewer system, everything needs to be considered uh, when we think about population and how we're going to plan for the future in Canada. And you're right, this has been a problem. And I think we got to a level right now where we're already at a bad level of affordability. Houses are already too expensive for many Canadians to afford. And based on our research, it looks like that problem is going to get even worse. How does this relate to interest rate policy? Yeah, so when you think about what the Bank of Canada is doing right now, um, population growth and a growth like we've seen in population in Canada over the last 12 months, this isn't just any population surge. This is on a level that we haven't seen since the uh, the post right after the World War II time period when we had uh, the immigration boom the, and the resulting baby boom. We haven't seen this kind of population growth since then. And in economic terms, what we call this is a demand shock. When people come to Canada, they need to buy things. They live, they work, they spend here. And when you have that much more spending in an economy, you're going to have more inflation. You're going to have more excess demand like we already have. And that's what the Bank of Canada has actually been fighting against. They're trying to reduce the amount of spending within the economy to bring down inflation. And from, from our analysis, what we find is that interest rates would, be, would have to be higher as a result hmm. of the fact that population is so strong. Because, you know, we think about um, economic growth. There's two ways to grow an economy. One, you grow the number of workers, and two, you grow the number or the amount of how productive those workers are. And both of those things will cause a demand shock. And when you have a demand shock, that results in higher interest rates within an economy. What about the fact that um, uh, this? We keep coming, hearing more and more about this. That our per capita productivity, economic output is not growing. I know Canada is not the only country dealing with that problem, but it appears to be especially bad in, in this country. It is, and you're right, it is a problem everywhere. So like I mentioned, there's two ways to grow an economy. Making people more productive is a very important method of growing an economy. That requires investment requires businesses and governments to invest in productivity enhancing technology, make people more efficient at their jobs. And we haven't had that for many, many years right now. And that's why when you see GDP growth, everyone's saying, okay, it's great that GDP is growing at, you know, we got, we're looking at 1% for Q2 right now. It's great that we're getting growth right now, given the high interest rates. Mm -hmm. But what is it per person? Are we actually getting, is this really growth? Are people's standards of living actually improving? And if we get GDP per capita, 
not growing like it has been for the last little while, mm -hmm. it means that the quality of life of Canadians in GDP terms is actually not growing. And that's why we look at things like GDP per capita, because it's not just about that headline number that we're seeing saying Canadian, Canada is growing. Like we grew the highest growth rate in the G7 in the first quarter of 2023. That's great. But with our population surge, you adjust for the population, we didn't grow. Hmm. And I think that's one thing that we need to consider um, as an economy, figuring out what kind of growth do we want? Do we want growth that is just a top line thing or do we want actual people's well-beings to improve? Because it's important, isn't it? it um, well, uh, I know our former uh, finance minister quit the Trudeau government uh, and then claimed in a uh, subsequent book that there wasn't enough attention paid to productivity per head. Yeah, it, it's, it's one of those things that I think when we're having uh, the level of population surge we've had, we've been able to rely on the fact that, you know, GDP has been and trugging along fairly well. And, but the problem is for long-term growth of an economy, you have to have that productivity. You don't improve the well-being of people without making them more productive of what they do on a on a day-to-day -day basis. Mm -hmm. And so we can make people, make businesses invest, get um, governments to invest in these new technologies. Um, even the fact that, I got to mention something to you. One thing that we found in our paper is that um, a lot of the industries that have high job vacancies, um, a lot of those job vacancies are for low wage sectors. Hmm. Now, how much innovation can be done in these low wage sectors? Because they haven't been able to find people to, um, to be able to take these jobs in Canada. And what we've, what we've noticed is that what the policy has been is that, okay, we're going to bring in temporary foreign workers to take a, take a job um, that, uh, that hasn't been able to be filled in Canada. Um, how much, my question is, how much are we incentivizing businesses to make those necessary productivity enhancing technologies mm -hmm. to be able to grow their business and grow the country in a sustainable way? That's really the question. I think you kind of uh, hit the nail on the head with we need that productivity, but we need to incentivize businesses and governments to make that investment.